air, you don't want to breathe it either. But it's easy to see and it's easier to avoid. Then there's the sheen that um, there's oil just coming in on the water surface. You don't want that on your skin, you don't want to breathe it. Then there's the invisible, what I call the invisible stuff, that's not such a good word, but it's the dispersed oil in the water, under the surface of the water that's coming in with splash with the waves and stuff. That stuff has got dispersant and dispersed oil. Don't breathe it, don't get it on your skin. And then the last one is just the air. And people are starting to call it bad air days. Like the wind doesn't blow on, you know, the wind changes. So some days the air, people say, oh gosh, it smells like a, um, my daughter's crayons that got melted in the sun. It smells like um, to go to the racetrack for the weekend. I come back smelling like a hydraulic fluid and stuff. You know? And you can smell it and you can taste it in the back of your throat. And that's what's giving people the headaches and stuff. So what I'm seeing is there's a huge public health risk. So when we get to hurricanes, do you have some relatives inland you could go visit? I mean, seriously, the, the prestige oil spill. Um, I, oh, um, okay, so the press, so there haven't been any studies that have come out of Exxon, well there was one, a Yale student, and that's posted on my website now too, did a pilot study on the, sick, on the Exxon Valdez workers 14 years after the fact. That's posted on my website, and she found a third of her sample, 14 years later, is still thinking they have the Valdez crud, what Exxon called colds and flu. Come on, you get over a cold not 14 years. So, I mean, you chemical poisoning, you have to go and get detox. You don't take Tylenol and it goes away. You have to get detox. If you don't get detox, you end up with, um, this is a, a toxic systemic. Um, this can pop up in different people's bodies differently, but basically it, um, it, it manifests as uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, fibromyalgia, all these things have a neurological component and that's what the oil spill messes up. Brain fog. And people said, geez, I thought I was just getting older. Well, how come it takes three hours in the morning to wake up and then your, your brain functions fine? What's that three hours? That's brain fog from this. So, um, so, so, I've been advising people in these communities, well, you're starting to smell this. If you're not going to leave, get a respirator, a vapor organic respirator for yourself, vapor, vapor carbon respirator for yourself. So if you have a bad air day, let's use some common sense and protect yourself. Who cares what BP is saying? And the other thing is I personally, because I've been traveling in all these coastal communities, I'm taking um, respiratory support, just nutritional supplements, anything to help my body deal with this toxic threat. The way that it's, I described it in that book, because I followed the sick workers. They went to get de detox centers in Texas. Um, there weren't that many detox centers um, back in 21 years ago. And I, I uh, went down there when I realized that this is where the workers had gone to, f to try to figure out what happens at these detox centers. And um, it's a matter of pulling the toxic chemical out of you and building up <coughs> a nutritional supplementation, your own body's natural ability to break down these toxic chemicals, because we can do it. It's just that your body gets overwhelmed and then you can't. So your body's like a rain barrel and you're just getting toxic. I mean, it, there's a new branch of medicine now that wasn't around 21 years ago. It was, remember it was called occupational medicine? Now it's called occupational and environmental medicine. And the environment is just our normal buildings, school, work, home. Just little toxic chemicals coming out of the glue, in the carpet, coming out of the glue in the wood, coming off the paint, drip, drip, drip into your body, the rain barrel, <coughs> and your body fills up and you start getting these, you know, chronic fatigue and symptoms that the medical community didn't connect for a long time with low level chemical exposure. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah. Um, touch a little bit more because you can also look the actual effect of the Okay. So, Right, now so this is what I was starting to go with where I was starting to go with prestige. Is there have been oil because I put this book out. <coughs> so other oil spills around the world said, oh, oh, we're sick workers, we're getting those same symptoms. So there have been studies done on the prestige oil spill in Spain that link exposure to <coughs> the oil spill. South Korea linked workers breathing to the oil spill, and not just workers, but people in communities. 
So like the Prestige broke up in a hurricane right on shore, totally took all the oil out of the water, mixed it, and blasted people's houses, blasted their sheep, blasted their dogs, and people got sick. And that, that was studied, and that's published, and that's up on my website. Um, and then, um, so I'm not, I'm not like making this up, okay? So take care of yourself, immune, immune suppression. Get some stuff that'll boost your immune system function. Um, so, I mean, just, you have to use some common sense here, because you're just, we're not getting it. Now, what I've been doing in community after community when I'm hearing these concerns, is we're, we're gonna start having on Fridays, um, work with the liaison <coughs> across, the, each community across the Gulf, and have a teleconference and say, okay, what, so we can link across five states and start raising our voice. Um, and one of the things that we're doing right now is working with physicians for social responsibility who, who have offered to come in and consult and bring in mobile medical units and consult with regular medical doctors who don't really put two and two together with occupational exposure and chemical illnesses and stuff and get everybody up to the same, you know, proper diagnosis for people and proper treatment. That's how you avoid these long-term problems. Um, so we're, we're trying to do that. Um, another thing that, uh, this is the best thing that came out of the Exxon Valdez, hands down, was under the Oil Pollution Act of 1990, was created a, a two regional citizen advisory councils. And these are people who do not have oil jobs or are not connected with the oil industry. It's allowing us, to, so it was fishermen, right? And, uh, tourism and environmental and native people. Local, not national groups, local. And to have a voice with industry and with the government. So that legally, under the Oil Pollution Act of 1990, if the oil industry operating in Prince William Sound does not fund every year the RCAC, the Regional Citizen Advisory Council, then it has to be shut down. That's how much power that group has. And we started calling the oil industry on their contingency plan. We said this is the biggest piece of fiction since Moby Dick, marine fiction. You know, you guys just make stuff up on this contingency plan so that you can operate. And look how well the contingency plan is working, right? We, we, the oil industry is still using boom, burning, and dispersant. We could have told you that didn't work 21 years ago. Why are they still using it? Why didn't they come up with something better? Because they have a rubber stamp process that allows them to keep listing, boom, dispersing, and burning. And so uh, we're all over that. We're gonna ch change that process. But the point is that once we started saying, the fishermen started saying, hey, okay, you listed dispersing. Prove that it works on North Slope crude at this temperature. Hmm, didn't work, how about that? So we had, we, we asked them for something else. And they can't, the oil industry can't operate unless we're happy. So we have had to work together. And it, it's totally increased the oil spill prevention and response measures that we now have in Prince William Sound. So what we're trying to create, and this is all on a very fast track, um, is because the Alaska guys said, hey, the Gulf of Mexico needs a regional citizen advisory council. It's in the Oil Pollution Act of 1990. If they work, create more of them. We've tried. We can't, because the industry blocks us everywhere we've been. But now there's this big spill. So the guys in Alaska drafted a Gulf of Mexico regional RCAC. I got hold of it. I'm like, whoa, whoa, uh, people here are pretty smart. They can figure out you know, how to craft this so it'll work for your own area. So I intercepted it on Friday, networked it to the, the groups that I've been working with so far, and we changed the legislation, we changed the wording to, to, to like, define, you know, we want five seats for commercial fishing in all five states, five seats for charter fishing in all five, one seat each, all five states. Um, this doesn't mean that more you can't go to the meeting, but uh, actually seated on the board, right? So the idea here is um, we like define commercial fishing so that there wouldn't be any trips with it. But this is all happening right now and we should, actually we should, I should, okay, I'm gonna make a note to post a draft of it just so you all can see it because Congress is trying to introduce it before their July 1 recess, and they wanna then pass it before their August recess. So it's on a pretty fast track, but this would be a good thing 